Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we'll be creating a responsive digital clock interface that changes color themes at the click of a button. But not only that, we'll also learn how to add a real-time clock using a VBA macro. The tutorial is divided into two parts. Part 1 designing the interface and part 2 inserting the VBA macro. So if you'd rather skip the design section and go straight for the VBA, use the time codes to do so. So let's get designing. Let's begin part 1 by designing this minimalist but quite elegant looking pneumorphic clock face that changes colors when you click the slider. We'll begin by creating the green theme. So let's go over to a new slide and the first thing we'll do is draw a circular shape. Let's draw it approximately the size that we want our clock face to be. So that seems alright. Let's remove the shape outline. Next, what I would recommend is that we enable the guides and mark the parameters of our circle. Having set up our guides, let's fill the circle with the first green color that we have over here. Next, Let's draw a rectangle for the background gradient. Fill the slide, remove the shape outline and go to gradient fill. We'll only be using two colors for this. So let's remove the extra gradient stops. And for the first color, let's use the green that we already have. And for the second color, let's go to the eyedropper and choose color number three. So we have a green to almost white gradient and we can change the angle to suit our needs. So I'll increase the dark green just by a little bit and that looks pretty nice. Let's send this rectangle to the back. Now as a good practice, we should always go to our selection pane and mark all our objects. So let's rename the circle we have and our background. This will help us keep track of all our elements when we start creating the second slide. So let's go back to our circle, go to the format shape options and let's give it a shadow. We'll give it the top left shadow in black. Let's make another copy of this circle and give it a bottom shadow this time in white. Let's reduce the transparency of the white so it stands out a little more sharply. Let's go to our selection pane and make sure we change the name of the second circle. And then let's align the two together. Let's make sure that we group them and that they stay inside the parameters that we've set for our circle within the guides. Now let's select the group, copy it and reduce the size by just a little bit so it stands out like this. So we already have the beginnings of our clock face over here. Now for the second group, again, make sure to keep renaming all your elements. Now let's select one of these circles, not the entire group. Let's drag it over to the side, go back to format shape. Let's remove the shadow for now and let's fill a picture into this. Let's adjust the picture. There we go. And then in shadow, let's give it an inner shadow and increase the shadow to make it a little more prominent. Then let's bring yet another circle over. I should rename this also once. 
Now let's go to our overlay circle. Make sure the shadow is removed. And this time let's fill it with the dark green color, the color number 2. This will ensure clear visibility and readability of our text. So let's place this over number 1 and make it a little transparent. So we can see the shadow and the picture in the background. Let's align both these shapes together. Group them and make them a tad smaller than the small circle. And there we go. Let's add a text box that we'll be using for the macro code later. So as you can see, the text box says HHMMSS, which is hours, minutes and seconds. Now PowerPoint might automatically capitalize the first H. So undo that. Then place it over your clock. Change the font color and adjust the size. Place it roughly in the center of the circle. You can use your arrow keys to fine tune the placement. And finally, we can add a slight shine over our watch face. So let's select the overlay circle. Let's rename it to shine. Let's go to shape format, edit shape, change shape to the semicircle or the chord as it's called over here. And using the yellow nodes, let's just drag it to half the size. Let's change the color to a gray, maybe a slightly darker gray, and increase the transparency. Okay, the lighter gray works much better. And there we have it, our first clock face. Next up, let's design a slider and button. So let's go to the rounded rectangle shape. Place it over our watch face slightly and drag it to almost the end of the slide. Use the yellow node to round out the rectangle completely and make it thinner. Of course, let's keep renaming our objects as we go. Let's remove the shape outline, go to color fill, and add the red color to this. And in shadows, let's give it an inner shadow and make it a little more pronounced. And that's basically our slider. So it seems like it's inset into the background. For the button, let's copy over one of our shapes. Make it a little smaller. Make another copy and make that even more smaller. So let's select this, group it, and drag it down. There we go. Now all we need to do is select all the elements of our watch face and make sure there in front of the slider. And that was pretty quick and easy. Now for the next slide, let's ensure that all our elements on the watch face are ungrouped. So you can press Ctrl Shift and G to make sure they're ungrouped or you can right click and ungroup them. Let's duplicate this slide. And let's bring over the dark colors. Now this is where our selection pane will come in handy as we can simply remove the objects and then recolor them one by one. We'll start with the background. So I'll speed up this part of the video where I'll individually recolor all the objects. We'll start by recoloring our background.
And there we go. Quite quickly using our selection pane, we've managed to recolor the slide without spoiling our alignment whatsoever. Next up, let's move our slider button over to the other side. I'll remove our reference slides for now. On slide 1, click on the button and select the innermost shape. Right click on it and click on link. Place in this document and select slide number 2. And similarly on slide number 2, select the innermost button, right click, click on link and select slide number 1. Then select both your slides, go into transitions and add the morph transition. Let's reduce the duration by a bit. And now let's see if the entire thing works. So here we have slide number one with the light color theme. We click on the slider, it moves and beautifully shifts into dark mode. And that looks really cool. Now that we've designed our slide, it's time for part two, which is inserting the VBA code. Now the first thing we need to do in order to insert our VBA code is to ensure that the developer tab in PowerPoint is enabled. So in order to enable that, you can go to options, go to customize ribbon and on the right side, under all the options, you'll find developer. So you need to enable that and then click on OK and that will enable the developer mode. Next, you need to click on Visual Basic, which will open up a new window where we'll add the code. Under VBA Project, right-click, go to Insert, and insert a module. This opens up a text box where we can paste the code. So I've pasted it here. Now don't worry about what the code is exactly right now. I'll add the code in the description as well as give you a download option for the same. So now that we have our code inserted, let's click on save and then we can close this application. Let's go to a new slide and let's test this out. Let's add a text box that has the same HH M M S S on it. Let's increase its size. Let's make sure this is not auto capitalized. Let's go to insert. Select our text box, go to action and click on run macro. So then if we go to full screen and click on this text, it automatically runs the macro and picks up whatever time you have on your system. So now that we've figured that out, let's go up to our design slides, select the first text box over here, click on action, go to run macro, click on OK, and on the second slide as well, let's go to action, run macro. So when we go into full screen and we click on the time, we have this beautiful clock running in real time. And then we click to the slider and it goes to the dark mode. Now there's one obvious drawback to this that every time you change the slides the time resets. Unfortunately I'm not an expert at VBA code but I do know that it can be looped to run from slide to slide in a continuous manner. So if there's anyone out there who can modify this code, I'd love to hear from you. Now one very important point to remember is that whenever you insert a macro, you cannot save your file as a PPTX. So instead, you must ensure that you save it 
as a macro enabled presentation which is a dot pptm otherwise if you save it as a regular pptx the macro will not be enabled and the clock will not run so do ensure that you remember this important point and that's it folks that's how we create these beautiful watch faces with real time clocks in them if you find this content helpful or would like to download the practice file please like subscribe and share this video as that would really help out the channel so keep on creating and see you next time